Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, apps that take you outside. Hi, my name is Guy Trainer, and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge and today I'm talking about apps that would really take you outside and help you interact outside with nature and things that you can find and this is especially because this is summer kids are going outside they have devices whether they're iPhones or other devices iPads even uh, although I want you to be careful if you're taking their iPads outside making sure that they're packed in a way that they wouldn't get hurt but the first app I want to share with you is National Geographic National Parks and these are park guides from National Geographic that help you see what's available and visit the parks even if you can't get there in person it's even better if you can get there in person and then use that as a way to find your way and find the best spots to go to and what you can see here is that this is a fantastic collection of photographs that allow you to visit different places. So let's say Archer's National Park, which is a fantastic national park in uh, Utah. And what you can see here is you get weather, you get stats about visitors, park size and all of that. You get information about the park, how to visit it, and then you can actually get park information, how to get there, camping, and full guide to get the full guide, you do have to pay, but to get the basic app, you don't have to pay. And here's a map, and you can see the different sites, and then you can bring up more information about each one of these sites. So you get a sense of where it is, you get to control it, and you can filter the activities by the things you want to do, the things you want to see, and the season so this is a fantastic guide to the national park and you can use it just as a way to visit things digitally if you can't get out yet or to uh, prepare your visit and of course if you're there at that moment it's a great way to connect and get the information and help guide through and you can see lots of photos beautiful and um, the things you come to expect from national geographic so this is national uh, parks from National Geographic and that's our first app. The second app is called Pocket Ranger. Pocket Rangers is from the National Park and what it does is it provides you the passport guide very similar to the thing you would get at the entry to the parks but you can get it before and you have it on your device. You can see by the orientation that it's actually an iPhone app that you can also use on your iPad and they update content and make sure that you get access to most recent events and things that are already happening. But this is uh, where we are or close to where we are right now and you can see that you can explore so I can explore the thing that is nearest to me. So if you don't know what's nearest to you, this is one way to explore it and we're getting a view of the region and the closest park to us. So we have to choose a category. Let's choose a category. Mm, what? Okay. I will choose. It shows our current location, and then I'm choosing flora and fauna. And I can zoom out and start seeing what's available. So here are water activities at the Missouri National Recreation something park probably and you can click on information Missouri National Recreational River River and you can get the park map and it will load you can also see activities reservations and events that are specific to the dates and of course information about weather so you can see that this app provides tremendous information if you don't have an idea about where to go this is a great place to start exploration of and national parks and national points of interest. If you do have an idea, you can explore that specific site and see what's available, what are the limitations. And because they are uh, constantly updated, you can even know if anything is closed for the season or anything is not operational. 
So great information in this app called Pocket Ranger. The next app I want to talk about is a stargazing app. Now, there are lots of stargazing apps, and they're all fantastic. But this one is made especially for kids, and this is Star Starwalk Kids. And in Starwalk Kids, what you get is you get information that it's a little bit more accessible to kids, and therefore, I find it a really fun. So this is how it opens. And you can, just like other stargazing map, you can look up and down and see different regions of the sky. Right now it's daytime, and it'll tell us, so there's time. There is a feature that allows you to change the time called Time Machine, and that allows you to look at things at night. But let's look at the things as they are today. If you are pointing it at a specific constellation, it'll give you information. So right now it gives you just the name of that specific planet. But if you look at the whole constellation, you can actually get more information about that constellation. So you can see the information, or you can ask for it to be read to you. These are the names of the two brightest stars in the constellation. And so you get a little bit of information, very child-friendly, and still very effective as a way to look out there. And you can see, for example, if you look at the planet, it'll also show you the path that the planet is going on, and you can get more information, including a short movie. So I can look at a movie about Jupiter. So this is a fantastic app that you can take outside, and you can go to the backyard, or you can go out uh, far in nature. Of course, you have to have Wi-Fi to get all the interactive features. But if you do, it's a fantastic way to watch the stars and actually get, get the information in real time, I'm pretty sure most kids will be highly engaged in what's going on and will look through uh, more stars than you could uh, do in almost any other way. And I've worked with my kids uh, years ago with star maps and doing all of that. And that's fantastic, but that gets uh, really hard after a few minutes, whereas this being interactive and self-adjusting really works well. So this is Star Walk Kids. Um, the last one I want to talk about is called iBirds, and I've got a few uh, iBird apps that uh, I can look at. I've got the iBird Backyard, and I bought the full features. You can start with the light version of things and then work your way. So let's look at the light version of uh, iBird. And what this allows you to do is identify birds as they are in nature. So if you go around and you see something, whether it's in your backyard or anywhere else, you can identify it. So if you know what it is or you have a guess, you can search through the long, long list of species. Or you can conduct a search. So you can do things like birds around me. It identifies where you are based on the GPS uh, and then based on what it knows where birds are, it'll tell you what kind of birds you're likely to, li to see. Or you can actually do a search based on observing the bird. So in this case, I'm seeing a bird that's prominently blue. And then I want to add that, sorry, I want to add that the secondary color is white. And it keeps giving me these. And looking at the bird, it's the mountain bluebird and if you click on that you get a lot of information you get some pictures you get the range where it is on the map and we're kind of on the edge of its uh, map uh, this is the behavior so if you're interested in how they behave to make sure it matches here are some photos and there are eight different photos of this bird one of my favorite features is my photos it allows you to take a picture so if you're seeing it and you want to capture and have it on your device, it's a way to add it. So if you're sending kids, they're seeing birds outside, it, they can take a picture, make sure that it matches and they identify it. And then information about identification. And my, one of my favorite features is actually the sounds they make. And you can see if the sounds they make match what you're hearing. And what you can see is they actually have multiple multiple versions of the sound so you can actually uh, listen to different versions because birds do have variations on those basic sounds. So uh, lots of information here. You can journal it, you can take pictures, you can add to it your own content so it's not just about being passive but you can actually 
actively go and seek out different species. Again, the um, iBird light will include only 64 of the most common species. If you want to go beyond that, you will have to pay. I believe that if you really uh, want kids or yourself to identify species and to really be engaged with this process, it's worth investing a few dollars in getting the full uh, version, but that's up to you. I would argue, as always, download the basic app, the light app that's free, see if you like it, see if it's worth it for you, and then uh, go ahead and download the full version. So today we talked about a few apps. There's lots more that allow you to go and interact. And that's one of the things that I love about mobile devices. We can take them out, we can interact with them, not just in the classroom or not just at home or in the car, but actually when we're out in nature, when we're seeing new things and we're recording them and we can interact with them. So this was a great way to think about using mobile devices in the summer when we're out and about and doing things. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the classroom.